So today it's been about six months since I picked up the Overlandish Base Camp 2 or V2 tent. Well, actually, they sent it to me to do a review on it. But anyways, getting back to it, many of you know that I usually camp on my rooftop tent on my Turtleback Expedition trailer, but there are occasions when I use a ground tent, and when I do... Well, yeah, I want that thing to be rock solid. Now, I will say this, the first version of this tent, and I wasn't really overly fond of it, and I'm not saying it's bad. I had an opportunity review. I declined on it simply because it just didn't check off enough of those boxes where I felt comfortable getting in front of you folks. As many of you have heard me uh, say in the past, my loyalty is not with a lot of the companies that we work with. My loyalty is with you, ensuring that you get the best possible product, best possible experience uh, that you can. Now, the big question, the 900-pound elephant in the room question is, does the Base Camp 2 or the V2 tick off enough, enough boxes, rather, to be considered as a rock-solid tent. Well, we're going to find out here momentarily. And many of you are saying, hey, maybe make an assumption. The fact that I'm in front of camera talking about it is going to be a good indicator, and I will say you are correct. Yeah, baby! <laughs> yeah. But is it perfect? No, and I'm going to discuss uh, you know, pros and cons, what I like about this here momentarily, and what this tent has to offer. As you watch this video, you must be thinking, man, this guy is so natural on camera, and the production value of these videos is so high. Well, what you see on camera here is a result of a lot of time, a lot of effort, so it would be appreciated if you would, man, punch that like button like it just insulted your mother, and... Actually, while you're at it, why don't you do the same for the subscribe button as well? And as a token for you participating and hitting that like button, here's a never seen before evidence that Bigfoot actually does exist. <laughs> That's not funny. But anyway, what we're going to do here is, friends, I'm going to pull this tent out of here. Uh, I'm going to set it up, and so you can see in real time how long it takes to set up. And while I'm doing that, you're going to hear me talking about some of the specs and features of this tent itself, and so kind of get you up to speed on that. And then ultimately, at the end, I'm going to share with you my two cents, and ultimately, whether I recommend it, I'm going to share with you things I like about it, and I'm going to share with you the things I don't like about it. So let's get on with it. Well, now you see me wishing I had a lawnmower with me because laying down this floor saver or ground sheet or a footprint, uh, actually we'll call it a footprint. I think that's what they call this thing here. Whatever, it's the base layer that we're gonna set the top on top of here in a moment. Uh, but uh, as you can see, the weeds are giving me a hard time here getting this laid out evenly. So I said a moment ago, I'm going to let this whole kind of setting up tent going real time. Well, because of this here, this part right here is boring. I'm just gonna speed this part up. But before I exit off this clip, I will say this. Now, one of my favorite features about this tent is in the footprint itself. So you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned in this video to find out what that is. All right, here comes the fun part, actually setting up the tent itself. Now, note how quick this goes up and note how slow I'm moving here. So I'm not breaking any land speed records putting this thing up here. But on to the specs. Now, the base camp V2, this thing is 11 foot by eight inches corner to corner when open. And it's six foot nine tall. And when it's packed down, it's only four foot 11 inches. Now the exterior is a proprietary PU5000 water resistant material and it has three layers and is insulated. So from a thermal standpoint, this thing is pretty awesome. So it's also perfect for cold weather camping. Now both doors are nice and big and more on that in a bit. Uh, and they also have have low threshold so you don't trip over them as you're entering or exiting the tent, which is a really nice touch. Both doors also have bug mesh or some call it screen. And there is Velcro on the inside and outside walls and on both sides of the door. So you can easily secure them out of the way, which is really nice. Now the tent also gets a lot of light thanks to five small windows. Each window is three layer with clear plastic in between a insulated interior layer and a bug mesh or the screen exterior layer. Now there's also one big window which has a insulated interior layer and a bug mesh or screen exterior layer all the windows use YKK zippers as well. Now the roof includes three vents for airflow. Now all the vents are sealed from the inside and the outside to help keep the heat or the cool air, depending upon the season, inside the tent. Now the floor of the tent is made from a super reinforced laminated material, which is waterproof. And so there is also a recessed zipper with a zipper cover that prevents dirt from getting into the zipper itself. Now the bottom of the tent is sealed and reinforced, which also helps with the waterproofing and protection from sharp 
objects on the ground. You can add a tent footprint for additional protection, which also gives you foyer space for taking off your shoes before heading into the tent. Now the tent comes with a rainfly for protection in rough weather. Now the rainfly attaches directly to the tent and blocks the windows, but if you want some light, you can stake the fly off the tent. Now the tent comes with a stock bag for transporting inside the car, but if you want something a little bit more rugged, you can upgrade to the tough bag, which protects it from the elements. So if you want to carry the tent on the roof of your vehicle, go right ahead. Now, other options include high wind package, which has secure lines and stakes for added stability, and weather package, which includes a rainfly footprint, a paracord and stake tie downs, six all terrain stakes, a zipper velcro hanging pocket, and two heavy duty cinch straps. Now I will say this, now over the course of the last six months, again, I've really beaten the hell out of this tent. I've taken in some pretty harsh environments and so forth. Now, before I share with you one experience here that just really sold me on this tent. Now, one of the things I really like about this tent here is you have these massive, these two big massive doors right here. Now, right now there's a nice blow of, or stream of air coming through here, which is quite refreshing. Now, I do have the plastic on the window, so obviously, there's no air coming through those, but you can remove the plastic and have just the screen there. But one of the, the experiences I wanna share with you about what really sold me on this tent. Now, you may recall back in January this year, um, we were out in Kofa Regional Forest, uh, out in, uh, or Kofa out in Arizona. And it was a cool, it was a fantastic experience out there. We were out there with a bunch of turtleback friends and so forth. And I brought the Overlandish Base Camp 2 out there to be more of a communal area. I had my son with me. So I wanted to have an area where we can eat, we can, I could do my work, do my editing and so forth, uh, versus up in the rooftop tent and so forth. I will say this, hands down, it was, it was one of the windiest camping experience that I've had hands down, bar none. Um, for the first two nights that we were there, nobody got, very few got sleep. It was so darn windy. And then the third day, I'm like, okay, screw this. This is not going to work. Because one thing I noticed is during the day, I was inside here uh, doing some work, doing some editing in the morning while Caleb was still sleeping and so forth. And it's dawned on me, boy, it is so darn quiet in here, even with the winds. And the winds estimated probably gussing upwards of 50 miles an hour and so forth and it was so quiet so the last day or the last night that we were uh, that we were uh, uh, there we slept inside of here and it was the best night of sleep that we had on that uh, particular outing so that was that's one of the concerns with these sort of tents here because of course what happens is like when we put this away what you're doing is you run around here and you just simply kick in these these uh, these walls right here and so my concern initially was, well, okay, with heavy winds, is that going to buckle these things in? And no, it held up like a champ. This tent, I really, really like this. This is hands down one of my favorite tents that I've tested. Now, on top of that, this tent was designed to fit inside Jeeps or short bed trucks. The Overlandish folks really made or were had specifically in mind the Overlanding community when they designed this thing, and it really does show. That's Awesome! <laughs> I will say this, in some of the tents that I have reviewed before in the past, uh, they were extremely long and the only way that I can get them to fit inside my Gladiator bed was one end here and the other end up where my camera is right now. So fitting diagonal. That is not productive productive use of space. You know, as I've said many times over, your number one commodity as an Overlander off-roader is what? It's space. So when you have a tent that's going up like this, then you have to get everything else that you're bringing kind of wedged around that. I mean, even a masterful Tetris person is going to have a pain in the ass time getting that set up. All right, so a few things about this tent that really jumped out to me where the version one just really didn't do much for me. Uh, first off, they use the different fabric uh, on the outside. This is actually pretty thick. Uh, so from a thermal standpoint, uh, this retains heat and also retains coolness inside, uh, which is really nice. Now also, one of the big things that I just could not get over with the original uh, base camp was the height. Now I forgot where it was. I'm six foot and I had to crunch down uh, to get inside. This thing, as you can see, there is... I'll put the actual height on the uh, the screen here, but as you can see, uh, there's a solid good foot, eh, about 10 inches above my head. And actually, I can walk to the, eh, 
I am, as you can see here, let me turn on the view where I can see. So I'm roughly about six inches away from the edge, but and that's where I start hitting. But through the majority of the tent, I am able to walk through. You have these little vent things that are located throughout the tent, which is nice, adds a little ventilation there. Now, the one thing I don't know uh, there's one more right there. Okay, now here's a question that I don't know. Uh, in California, we don't get too much rain, or when we recently had rain, I didn't have the opportunity to get out and test this thing. Um, is with the rain fly on here, now, how much ventilation are you going to get inside this tent? So this is probably one of the concerns that I have for this tent. Uh, is once you put the, they, it comes with a rain fly, and I don't have that with me right now. I'm pretty sure you're gonna have to have these windows closed in order to, when it rains, and keep the rain out and so forth. The rain fly itself, I'm pretty sure it's gonna keep that snug. I mean, you might be able to get a crack up along the top here with that ventilation open. Uh, so that's one of the things that will have to be, if you're in a rainy situation and so forth, um, you may need to put a larger tarp or something on top because these are not waterproof out of the gate. I mean, it will keep some moisture out, but if it's going to dump hard on you, this is not going to do it for you. But aside from that, if you're in a dry climate, if you're dry camping and so forth, this thing is an absolute big, massive home run, enthusiastic, double thumbs up. I absolutely love this tent. Um, again, there's a few things about this that really pop out. Now, here's one of the big things I absolutely love about this, and the wind's making a mess of this here, and then we have uneven terrain underneath this. But you have this kind of a foot area here, uh, or foyer, whatever you want to call it, but they made this additional flap on the, the base that they give you here. And so this is fantastic for taking off your shoes, leaving your shoes here so you have something you can get inside or leave your shoes out here. That's a big plus. Now, here's another thing. I absolutely love the Velcro on the doors. That's fantastic. There's nothing worse. One of my favorite tents on this planet doesn't have this. Uh, that's the, the Russian Bear Up 5 tent. It drives me up the wall. You have to figure out how you can bunch up the tent, and that just makes a mess of things. These guys, again, they have Velcro on both the inside and the outside. You do have, see, this is what I would like to have seen on above the windows here, this little flap right here. So when you, this is probably gonna keep a little bit of the rain coming off if you're in a rainy situation from coming down inside. Actually, if it was kind of buckled out a little bit, that'd be cool. But if they had those little flaps up along the top, I think that would be fantastic. I wouldn't be surprised if those guys have already decided or have something in the line of that for the version three, because what they did, with the version one is they listened to a lot of the feedback and they came out and they crushed it with this one. Again, the, the first tent I wasn't excited about. I just, it just didn't sit well with me. Again, not saying it's bad, but it just wasn't, wasn't something that personally I would want to get out. This thing is an absolute rock star. Again, this thing really excites me. Uh, but anyways, so as you can see there, uh, it goes up pretty darn fast. Inside it is, I mean, it is extremely roomy. You have some pouches along the walls there. Um, the roof is extremely dark. Uh, and the windows all have these plastic along with it, along with the screen here. So you can just take the plastic off or keep that up there as it is. And so the plastic's actually nice. I wish more tents would have that plastic option versus just simply screen only. But as you can see, this is very roomy. Now, for all you fishermen out there, so where's where's the lake? Okay, so here we go right here. You have a zipper that goes along the whole out, this whole bottom here. So if you do ice fishing, this thing is fantastic so as you can see this whole bottom comes out so essentially you can have access to a chunk of ice or a lake frozen lake underneath you and get whatever fish that you want so that zips out super easy all right friends and that is all i have here for you today uh, this was a fun review to do six months in the making again i'm gonna repeat it again the original base camp if you have this, you really need to take a look at the base camp too. If you've never picked up one of these things, 
I would seriously take a consideration. If you're after a tent that deploys fast, uh, that is affordable and fits inside of a short bed pickup and so forth, yeah, this is a big home run. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link down below if you want to get more information or pick up one of these tents for yourself. But friends, that is all I have here for you today. It's that time where I'm going to ask you to do all that YouTube stuff. So if you haven't hit the like button, please consider doing that. Hit the subscribe button. And last but not least, so therefore we get to see each other again, hit all notifications or that little bell thing. So therefore every time we come out with a new video, YouTube is going to send you a heads up that this video is live and ready for you to watch. But friends, yeah, cameras are going off. So you get out there, stay healthy and find your adventure.